With thousands of devices on the market, each with their own screen resolutions and dimensions, designing for all of them would be a never-ending task. Instead, we want our designs to be flexible and responsive so that they can adapt across these screens. When designing, we position frames and objects within a top-level frame, which are frames added directly to the canvas and represent the screen dimensions of the specific device we are designing for. Anything positioned within a frame is called the child object and can be constrained to the edges of their containing frame, called the parent frame. Once constrained, they'll maintain a set distance or proportion from the parent frame's boundaries. Figma displays these constraints as a dashed line extending from the bounding box. Let's test out these mechanics. Create a 300 by 300 square frame and add a 100 by 100 ellipse. Align the ellipse to the horizontal and vertical centers of the frame. You can set constraints across the horizontal axis to the left, right, left and right, center, or scale. Across the vertical axis, you can constrain to the top, bottom, top and bottom, center, or scale. When you create new objects inside a frame, the constraints are set to the top and left by default. Try resizing the frame. See how the ellipse will stay positioned in relation to the top left of the frame? Change the defaults to the horizontal and vertical centers by selecting the center lines within the constraint box. You can also select a constraint via the menu on the right. Now, select and resize the top level frame. No matter how the frame is sized, the ellipse will remain in the horizontal and vertical centers of the frame. Now, let's try a real world example. To start, place the system bar component in the top left corner of the top level frame. Let's resize the width to fit by dragging the right side of the system bar frame. Notice how the right side icons do not keep their relative position to the right side of the system bar frame. To adjust, press Command and Z to undo the resize and then set the horizontal constraints to right and vertical constraints to center. Finally, resize the width to fit the top level frame. Now, add the tab bar component to the bottom left hand corner of the top level frame. Resize the width by dragging from the right side. Notice how the icons do not distribute evenly. To keep the icons evenly spaced, we can apply a layout grid. First, add a layout grid and change it to columns. Constraints only work for columns and rows that are also set to stretch, not grids. Change the count to three for our three icons. Adjust the margins to 16 and the gutter to 32. Finally, switch the vertical and horizontal constraints to center for all icons. Now, when we resize the tab bar frame, the icons will stay evenly distributed. Next, add the floating action button component and position it 16 pixels above the tab bar and 16 pixels from the right side of the top level frame. Let's resize the top level frame. Notice how our objects do not resize with the top level frame. We need to constrain the objects to the top level frame. For the system bar component, set the horizontal constraints to the left and right and the vertical constraint to the top. For the tab bar component, set the horizontal constraint to scale and vertical constraint to bottom. For the floating action button component, set the horizontal constraints to the right and the vertical constraint to the bottom. Now, when we resize the top level frame, everything will automatically adjust. Finally, add the app bar component underneath the system bar aligned to the left side. Let's add some new text. We want our text to wrap when it hits a specific width. Change the text wrapping to fixed size and adjust the bounding box to 128. Change the horizontal constraints to left and right and vertical constraint to center. Now, the app bar text will expand as the bar expands. With these methods of using constraints, you can create flexible and responsive designs that can adapt across different screens. These screens can be found as frames in the design panel.